You're listening to the WordPress podcast, episode number 39, for the week of March 30th, 2008. Hey, everybody, I'm Charles Strickland. Uh, I'm the host of the WordPress podcast, and I'm joined by my usual co host, Jonathan Bailey. Hi, Jonathan. Hey, Charles, how's it going? Uh, it's going very well. We are recording live from WordCamp Dallas. And uh, we're joined today by Mark J. Quith, who's with B5 Media, and uh, he is a core developer for the WordPress project. Uh, thank you for coming on, Matt, uh, Mark. Uh, thanks for having <laughs> me, Charles. I said Matt because we were expecting Matt Mullenweg, uh, the uh, president of Automatic and the uh, project leader of WordPress, to join us any moment now. Because the big news coming from WordCamp Dallas, of course, is that they released 2.5 yesterday. Um, and we can't really go over a lot of stuff. This is not a visual medium. <laughs> but uh, would it be safe to say that the big developments with 2.5 would be streamlined workflow and then, uh, what, the media uploader? Yeah, well, it's just a completely redesigned back end. So not much is changing on the front of your blog, but the back end is completely new, uh, completely fresh uh, visually and with regards to workflow. Yeah, I've, I've actually I installed it on my site last night. I did the suicidal thing. No one should ever do this. But at 2 o'clock in the morning, I just FTP'd and uploaded everything and you know, did the cross yourself and hope, and it worked beautifully. I keep that database backup, so I wasn't too worried. But it worked, and um, it was interesting because, like you were describing with the admin interface, I had my admin interface open. And then when the upload finished, and the data in another tab I had done, the you got to do a database upgrade. And it takes a few seconds to do that. But after it had done that, I hit sh like a shift refresh in my admin panel and just watched it change. And it's a totally different world. It's a, com it's a completely foreign, alien place to me right now still. so Yeah, it'll, it'll take you a while to get used to it. Um, it honestly only <laughs> took me a day or two before I was completely in love. And going back to other blogs that weren't on, on 2.5 was just really, really uncomfortable. Yeah. So I think that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, B5 is going to be updating all their stuff to 2.5? Eventually. We, we're generally behind the curve a little bit, uh, especially because uh, a lot of our bloggers are non-technical, and uh, so this would really throw them for a loop. <laughs> so we want to get you know training stuff up, and, you know, uh, screencasts and documents, so ease their transition. Yeah. A lot of screencasts and a lot of books and articles are going to have to be completely redone. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry everything everyone. Everything looks completely <laughs> different now. Um, you mentioned something about how some people were having some sort of a problem with the media uploader. Uh, I believe there's a bug with Internet Explorer 7. Yeah. Um, I committed a fix last night, so I mean, we're, gonna, we're definitely going to have a, a 2.5.1 eventually, probably within about a month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's pretty typical of WordPress releases, though. It's just ironing out things. Yeah, it's you know, it doesn't matter how many people test the release candidate; no. they all find the bugs the day you release. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally they have release parties, and and as much as we've been kind of partying, did everyone go out to the Irish pub and the Frisco bar last night? Yeah, pretty much. They're a quiet bunch this morning. <laughs> Yeah, That's right. They're all <laughs> hung over. <laughs> Either that, or they're in church on a Sunday morning. Uh, <laughs> um, That's nice. Give them the benefit of the doubt. That's <laughs> right. That's right. I'm trying to be, trying to be magnanimous here. Uh, of course, I would argue that part of the problem that Internet Explorer pro uh, users are having is that they're using Internet Explorer, but we won't go there. <laughs> I was about to say I tested it quite thoroughly on Safari and Firefox. I didn't even think to try Internet Explorer last night. I have not. I have no Internet Explorer set installed cross my anywhere. Mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but other than that, have you heard any problems? Any concerns? Uh, a lot of people are. I know whenever they it first came out, the the release candidate, and some people were using Trunk before that. Uh, it is jarring. It's like, yeah. whoa, what the heck happened to my, my admin pages? Uh, and then a lot of people were talking about that, that big white space on the side. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it is jarring. Uh, what I'm wondering is, have you gotten word from anyone? Uh, well, let me ask you, everyone out here, has anyone upgraded since... Since wow. yesterday, yeah. Whoa. A quarter to half? Yeah. yeah. I was not well, the I'd only one at 2 like a.m. doing these uploads. 75% or so. What's the consensus? Do you like it? 
Do you not like it? Okay, a couple thumbs, thumbs up. up. A whole bunch of thumbs up. Yeah, everyone likes okay. it. Okay. Any we, plug-in issues? Anyone have yeah, issues with exactly. having to plug -in issues? Okay, got a couple. got a couple, okay. not many. Uh, have we got a mic out? We could. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I know Eric here in the front. Do uh, you have issues with a plug-in? Right here, right here. Hang, hang on, let, let her get the mic to you. I had a slight issue with the event calendar, but I think I finally was able to fix it okay. about 2 o'clock this morning. So. <laughs> the good news is that uh, any plugin that primarily acts on the front of your blog is going to be mostly unaffected. I would say 98% are going to be fine. It's the ones that are modifying the admin yeah. interface, the ones that are uh, facing with the media uploader or the WYSIWYG editor, those are probably going to have problems. Yeah, I mean, Matt said the things that interface with the database will have no major issues, and the things that are theme related or front end related will have no issue either. So, right. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, weren't there also a couple of deprecated functions in 2.5? Here's the man that asked right I here. Know. <laughs> I'm sure there were uh, some. I actually, I don't have <laughs> the, the list. There are. There, there's. A, I think there was like six or so. It was published on um, Weblog Tools Collection. Uh, which ones are? But they're not Good really tip. big ones. And that, of course, would be the voice of our usual, our regular contributor to the WordPress podcast, Ms. Laurel Van Fossen, yeah. who does everything WordPress.com for us. When was that posted to uh, Weblog t Tools? Um, this week, it, it's a, it's a Michael H. Published speaking of it, speaking of which, here's Mark just week. walking in. Mark, Come Mark, on can we can we hijack you and ask you to join our podcast? Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Gosh That's right. from Weblogs Tool Collection. Get your butt up there. A great source for WordPress news. Uh, the the question, question was, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. All go. right, so, so sweet. Question was. Uh, when, was, when was that post from Michael H. published um, on Weblog Tools Collection that listed the deprecated functions? Um, about... And database changes. A week ago. Okay, about a week ago. Okay. Within. But overall, uh, okay, let's, let's do one more. Well, well, just real quick. Yesterday, I think, was mentioned by several people that um, there were no schema changes, I believe, to the database uh, once it went 2.5 release candidate. But I noticed when I did I installed release candidate two and also the the permanent release that it did mm -hmm. database changes. It said I needed to upgrade or update my database. Uh, the reason for that was uh, some people were having problems with uh, the media uploader, and uh, people had mod security. And as a as a potential solution, we put some lines into your uh, HT access. Um, and basically that was triggered on the database uh, revision upgrade. We also added, I believe, a few uh, indices to uh, the comments table. It's not really a schema change. Okay, Non-schema changes, just other database changes. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. From what I understand of um, what's gone into this 2.5, should not affect plugins if you've got 2.3 working. It should not affect plugins at all. Um, if you're a plugin author, the only things that, a few of the things that changed were like default stuff and um, the indices like uh, Mark said and um, right up close. there you go. You should be, you should be fine with, um, if, you, if you've got plugins that work on 2.3, it should work on 2.5 as well. Well, it, we're database just saying in, unless, yeah, database ones, but the admin ones yep. could be in trouble. I've got a quick thing. I just noticed this. I'm sitting on my dashboard now. Um, one of my favorite um, items on the dashboard has always been the incoming links. And traditionally, that's pointed to Technorati. Uh, now it seems to be switching to Google Blog Search. I believe we switched that a couple versions That was, ago. That was um, I believe 2.0 was the switch there. Really? Was it that early? I thought oh, it was yeah. really that early. It, it, it was, was really close. It was a 2.1, but it, it was a long time ago. Because yeah, I had a plug in. I didn't know it. <laughs> Do, you can explain why? Yeah, Aaron says 2.2, yeah. Okay. I've had um, 2.3, I didn't notice that, okay. Yeah, uh, but the good thing now is uh, if you prefer something else, it's configurable. You can oh. just click edit and point it to something else. Sweet. Okay. 
Uh, so the general consensus then is that uh, 2.5 is stable and a good thing, right? It's it's something to be upgraded to as soon as possible. Yeah, I would say um, for people who you like, you know, have to manage comments and just people are cranking out lots of articles, give it a couple days to sort of cure and set in, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> and uh, I, I think you'll be convinced. I think you'll be faster in the long run and and just have a more of like this Zen feeling because it's just. <laughs> laid out very, very well. Um, okay. I have a question about the, uh, okay, the plugin upgrader. Right. Um, I was following that for a while. Um, has, most of, has most of those issues been fixed? Or is it still something to uh, handle with care? Uh, there, uh, we haven't seen any issues like the one where uh, Matt discovered one day that all of his plugins were gone, and most of them were custom plugins he had written. He wasn't <laughs> sure he had a backup, so he, he was sort of freaking out in Austin about that. His backups got wiped out, actually. Oh, did they? Oh, oh. no, no, no. <laughs> so, yeah, there were a few kinks. I've not seen any recently like that. Um, I just tried to right here and try to update a plugin. And it actually removed the plug. Luckily, it was one that wasn't active. It removed the old plugin, but was unable to install the new one. So now that plugin is totally gone. Uh oh. Well, that would be that would be a bug. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Laurel again. There's part of part of the issue that that um, is being discussed here, so we can bring everybody up to date. Is the new plugin installer? The plugin has to work with it. It has to communicate with it. It has to connect with it. And the older plugins don't in order to work. So you just need, you know, to update them, they have to have the script that's in it to, that makes it well, They need to be on the, uh, and on on the, the plugin repository, repository yeah. which yeah. is on, in the WordPress data, uh, plugin database, I mean, uh, directory, in the WordPress plugin directory. Uh, so if, if you are a host of a plug, if you have a plugin and you are a host of a plugin and you want it on 2.5, you need to get it in there. Yeah. We've got, this is a central place for plugins. Now, they don't have to be spread all over the place. Get them in there so that people can get them really easy right from their administration panels. And it's nice for you as a developer, too, because you get a subversion. You get a, a track install where people can submit tickets and, and you know, the nice rating panel where they can give you feedback. Okay, and I'll be fair. I just tried another one, and that one worked. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You're one and one right now. You're, you're Playing the Wi-Fi. <laughs> well, maybe you guys can clear up something for me. Uh, we talked about this the other night, uh, Mark and I did. Uh, my understanding up until just the other day was that not only were plugins going to be updatable, but actually the core was going to be updatable. What, I mean, where, <laughs> is that going to come, or, or what's the deal with that? That may be coming down the road. Um, I think maybe our next immediate upgrade uh, challenge is going to have uh, plugins be not just upgradable, but installable from your interface. So you actually never need to leave where you can browse in there. And uninstallable? Well, yes, we've always been able to uninstall plugins. <laughs> Oh, take them out of the database. Yeah, the big, all the big the thing they leave behind. Ha the big thing Honestly, about having that, them removed from the database as well, so they're totally cleaned out. That's pretty much up to the plugin author. We have de what we call deactivation hooks, which uh, a good plugin author or citizen could use to you know, <laughs> clean up their mess. A lot of them don't, and you find you have a lot of tables left over. And, yeah. Um, and that's why, as a plugin author, in the past, I've tried to encourage people to use the built-in functions and the built-in tables inside um, WordPress so you're not creating extra tables that don't get used, that don't get um, the right indexes on them, that um, don't get cleaned out, frankly. And as a matter of fact, one of, one of the big... Oh, I'm, sorry about that. <laughs> um, I'm in the process of writing an article on what to expect in terms of plugins. Um, for this upgrade, I I really see if if you follow the, the the basic concept of taking all the plugins off, upgrading the blog, and then turning them on one by one, you're going to run into very few problems. Um, the biggest deal I see right now, <coughs> excuse me, is to is when you've got a plugin that tried to install and didn't install, and um, the bug, one of the bugs might be that it deletes the plugin, but it can't find the new one and it can't update it. Um, or you'll find that it 
couldn't work with your file system on your host and it couldn't update the plugin because of that. Um, those are, in my opinion, very recoverable problems. Um, should be very easy to fix, should be very easy to get around if you know where the plugin was from and hopefully you got it from the, the repository, which I strongly, strongly encourage. Um, you, you, should, you should have no problems. And again, there's, there's, I, I, I speak volumes for WordPress uh, community support. And I personally reply to you know, five to 10 emails a day on support just because I can help. And just ask a question and you know, one of us will find a way to answer it for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah Jacob. Um, going back to the, uh, the track for uh, plugins, can, I think that I believe there was a, uh, an article or set of articles on the weblog tools. Um, is that um, up to actually submit tickets? Because I, I try to figure out how to do that for the, uh, the, the plugins that I have, but I wasn't able to, to figure that out. And if I can't, then I'm pretty sure people who I want to submit tickets for my plugins won't be able to figure it out also. Well, I think uh, would help with that just, is if we had sort of a uh, shortcut interface where instead of pointing people to track, which is sort of a geeky tool, uh, we had like a form directly within the, uh, the plugin directory. And we do have like a thing where you can leave comments, but it's not really good for tracking bugs. So I think it'd be great if we had like submit an issue and it just expanded open a little text area and you could you know, type in your issue and it would submit it as a bug uh, into the track system. Okay, uh, we're going to hold off on the questions about 2.5 for just a few minutes. We're going to open everything up again, so keep your questions in mind. Uh, I want to move on to something that uh, Mark has talked about that I want to discuss. You have an interesting idea for a way to moderate comments. And I was hoping you could tell everyone about that. Yeah, so um, I, I maybe within the last two years reached the point where I could not I just couldn't have comments going into my email inbox. It was just too many a day, and it was just drowning out, you know, my actual emails. So I had to turn that off. So I, so I was depending on the uh, WordPress admin for reading comments, uh, managing them, you know, marking as spam, all that. And I, I was getting really frustrated because uh, I wasn't getting this sense of, uh, you know, being done with it ever. Because you just sort of go in and you have all the you know all the comments that made it uh, onto your blog, and you're going back and you're you're marking as spam the spam ones. You're deleting the the sort of you know bacon quasi spam ones, and you just keep going backwards. And I could keep going backwards over you know thousands and thousands of comments, never reach the point where I say, all right, I did it. You know, I took care of all the new comments. Um, so I was trying to think of a way to make it more uh, like. Like a, like a Gmail inbox, which I think is a is a great system because you have you have the inbox and you can either you can archive something, which takes it out of the inbox and marks it marks it as read. You can spam something. Uh, you can delete something. Um, you can also reply to something. That's that's sort of a, a separate yeah. Laurel. Laurel. Yeah, it kind of goes along to, with what she was talking about yesterday. You had some grease monkey scripts and stuff like that that did a yeah, lot of that. Yeah, the comment, comment ninja. Yeah, comment ninja. A uh, grease monkey okay. script from main tech at internet uh, duct tape. <clears throat> Fabulous thing. Yeah. So I was thinking of a, a way that could be better and actually sort of stumbled across the uh, concept that it sort of already exists if you're moderating all your comments. I noticed like people like uh, Matt and Andy don't really, weren't really complaining about this because they, they moderate their comments. So the comment moderation queue sort of acts like the Gmail inbox, where here's all your new comments, and you're either, mm. you know, archiving them or approving them, you're spamming them, you're deleting them, is, and then you, when you're done, it says nice, nice little zero, and you just, you know, have the satisfaction of knowing that you've closed that loop, and there's nothing that needed your attention that didn't get dealt with. So I, I wrote up a, a plugin called a Comment Inbox that uh, for people who don't want to uh, manually approve each comment before it appears live, uh, that basically treats your comment moderation queue as a comment inbox. So all comments go in there, but they appear live immediately. 
And so the approve action is more like the archive action, actually relabel it archive. So you're basically just marking it as red. And if I can just stop you for a second, that can be found at markjquith.wordpress.com. His last name is spelled J-A-Q-U-I-T-H, markjquith.wordpress.com. Look for a comment inbox. And actually, if you just do a search for comment inbox in Google, it's currently number one. So nice. <laughs> Sweet. I'm all about the SEO. Huh? I know, man. A question on, <laughs> on where you're going to take this, Mark, is because one of the most common things that people like and, go and G the Gmail interface has is threading. Yeah. Um, so threading really becomes necessary when you have uh, replying within the admin. You can't do replying within the admin without threading because threading gives you the context you need. Um, so if you're going to reply to a comment and someone or later in the thread has already replied and answered their question, you're going to look foolish you know, if you're replying right there. So you really need that context. It's sort of uh, an interface challenge uh, to do that, but it's something I've been thinking about. I think that's the direction I'd like to go. But uh, with the regards to like the the whole concept of red versus unread, I, I was just thinking, you know, just a new uh, new column where, you know, all all the comments go into one place, and you can, you know, if you're into that, you you know, mark them as read and treat it as your as your little inbox. I, I think it's a great idea. I'd like to get your input on it. You like it? Little drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Matt Mullenweg has entered the building. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Mullenweg has entered the building. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, uh, howdy. Howdy. <laughs> howdy. Uh, we have talked about 2.5, and uh, we're now talking about uh, Mark's uh, comment inbox plugin. Cool. Weigh in on anything? <laughs> Shotgun. Just jump in later. Okay. Uh, you want to just go to questions now, or? Does anyone want to ask Mark about his idea or Let's just open it up, yeah. When is it going to be in the core? Uh, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm going to write some patches for 2.6 and see how people like them. Okay. Well, I know uh, Ronald and Jeff had some questions, so let's just go for there. My question was on uh, WP Extend plugins. And as far as adding plugins, is that going to be any more automated, or is it always going to be a man-in-the-loop approval? It's always going to be man-in-the-loop approval, um, because we get some really crazy things submitted. Um, two things happen. And one, we haven't been able to fix through technical means, which is that we get about probably 10 or 20 uploads a day of people, I think, trying to install plugins on their blog. <laughs> for, for lack of a better term. So, you know, about five times a day, someone will uh, submit a, a Kismet plugin. That's our Kismet <laughs> plugin, that sort of thing. And then, then, of course, we do some review for, you know, the license doesn't have any mal malware in it. Um, there's actually everything that goes in is reviewed um, before and once they start doing commits. So, but there are more than one person doing it now, so it should be a lot faster. Now, just to clarify, the uh, plugins in the repository have to be GPL compatible, correct? This is correct. Mm -hmm. Making sure. I noticed with the uh, design that some of the uh, forum posts that are tagged with the plugin have disappeared. Is there any uh, plan on bringing that back, or that way some plugin authors can fill support from within WP Extend? It might just have been an accident. Um, the idea is for the support forums and the plugin <coughs> directory to be tied together. So one of the one of the measures of quality you can find when looking at a plugin is in addition to the rating or the number of downloads it's going to be you know look at its support form and all the things tagged with that in the wordpress support forms is the author responding are people having a ton of problems you know is is it active those types of things yeah, this is uh jeff jeff from jeff 2.0.com but something i haven't heard yesterday and kind of like you guys uh, highlight today is some of the security our major security flaws have, have been fixed in 2.5 because that seems to be a big topic. Sorry. It's just that some of the security flaws that have been touted as, as huge security flaws, in my opinion, really aren't. Uh, but that's why I kind of scoffed there. I didn't mean to <laughs> imply anything didn't there. didn't mean to say that out loud. Yeah, though. I didn't mean to imply anything there, <laughs> Jeff. Well, I think that security is, is a lot of things, right? 
And the most important thing that everyone in the room can do to be secure is just keep their blog up to date. Um, because as a team, um, we respond, we take everything that comes into the security list very seriously and we respond as quickly as possible. Um, I personally have never been, had a problem with my blog, even, and I've run trunk code for four or five years. Um, the WordPress development blogs, the other blogs. If you look at a lot of the official blogs out there, a lot of the most high profile ones, the only ones that have ever had problems, the ones that are biggest targets in the world, tech crunches, those types of things, are the ones that are on like versions that are three or four years old or that have some sort of bad server configuration or there's something wrong in another part of the script. Like for example, the one time my blog had a problem was when I published my password publicly. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, don't do it. In a, in a SVM problem, but uh, that's definitely human error. <laughs> it, was, um, it was not a, a script problem. So um, with that, and I think that you know, one of the things that we talked about yesterday, we've redone a lot of the underlying way we store data and work with cookies and, and code passwords and everything. That should make it a higher barrier to entry. And um, as we discussed uh, yesterday at my talk, you know, one of the things we're thinking about for the next year is having an external auditor come in and go line by line through all the WordPress code. Okay. Uh, i tell you what. You have uh, present company in, uh, excluded. You have at least four of some of the best uh, WordPress people <laughs> in the business up here right now. So if you have any question right now, we'll take it. Any plug-in question, any content question, database, developer, doesn't matter. WordPress themes. When is that? What about them? <laughs> when, when is that thing coming on? I get questions oh, constantly. Oh, the theme viewer, you mean? That's a good question, Matt. <laughs> I think, you know, we've talked about that already and that it's coming. Um, I think it would be also interesting to hear where you guys think themes are going. Like, are themes going to encompass more functionality? Are they going to be purely presentational? Is it going to be like a sandbox world where everything's a style sheet, like back in the day? Or where's it going? I think all, all the above. I, I can <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lame answer. We're, we're going to offer you a couple of things, and you have the choice of taking them all. What would you do? <laughs> uh, I want them everything. <laughs> um, I, I definitely think uh, you know sandbox is appealing because you can install one theme, and uh, you know just you know the markups, the underlying markups, the same, and you can just change the look and feel with all these different you know uh, like CSS styles that go over top of it. But there are always going to be people who want to do something. You know, really funky, and uh, that's going to require. That, you would, know, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you something, uh, Matt. Last year, whenever we met in San Francisco, you did something that I thought was just absolutely ingenious. We had a meetup at a coffee shop, and uh, I expected, you know, maybe me and Laurel and Aaron, a couple of people to show up, and next thing I know, the entire automatic crew is walking in the door. And we all sit around in a big circle, and Matt kind of takes control of it, which was fine by me. And all of a sudden, he asks everyone, what's something you hate about WordPress? <laughs> and we all go around, and, and you could tell he was like mentally making notes. OK, got to work on that. <laughs> got to work on that. So where have we come as far as last year and all of those little checklist items? Do you think we've progressed? Or, or, or I remember your keynote presentation. You said something about how all the things that you thought were important and, and milestones, we ended up going off in a completely different direction. Is that kind of the case from last year? So a lot of the things that I personally recall from that meetup, and it would be interesting to do that exercise again. Yeah. Just to going down the line. <laughs> and throw um, it out to these guys, too. It would be, uh, you know, I think 2.5 addresses a great deal of them. Um, personally, mm -hmm. a lot of my... I already have a list for 2.6, but a lot of the 2.5 stuff out uh, addresses, I think, what I feel were long-standing issues with WordPress. Um, to kick it off, one of the things that frustrates me most right now about WordPress is the client-side JavaScript performance, I think, is a, a big and long-term issue that we really need to dig into because as we use more and more JavaScript, it's actually important to get down and look at what the different engines and the different browsers are handling things, how we're dealing with arrays, is it efficient? Just like we do on the PHP level, we profile things, we optimize things. We need to start doing that on a JavaScript level because the majority of the client perceived load time for a page is after the page has been generated. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'll put the question out. Uh, any question you have, but anything you hate about WordPress, or if hate's too strong of a word, anything that you would like to see, Jay? Or anything that irks you. Anything that irks you, yeah. Well, I had a developer question. Okay. <laughs> I'd say, uh, is it a developer question or is it <coughs> One of the above. <laughs> My question is, for uh, WordPress plugin developers, is there a good place to uh, store data where you don't have to modify core tables or use options or custom fields? We actually talked about this, I think maybe with Andy over there in the corner at his throne, uh, about having like sort of a generic meta table where you know, they wouldn't be creating all these new tables to store, which is just generic data where they just have a key value and associate it with a post or with a comment or something. So in my opinion that sometimes you should put things in the options table, if it's settings or if it's data. If it's something that isn't like an object, it's going to have some metadata attached to it, the post table is actually a fantastic place to put it. And you can have custom post types, you can create a post type for an event, a post type for a lot of things, and then use the metadata that's normally in the WP post table. So you have dates, you have author, you have custom fields, you have comments, you have a lot of things that you can optionally attach to that. And with a custom post type, it doesn't get show up anywhere unless you explicitly include it in your templates or in your rewrite rules. And um, if you're doing something that's going to be a more highly, opt if it's not optimized for the same usage cases that WordPress posts are, like for example, I have a plugin which takes all of my email and puts it into a table and does some logging and some stats on it. And that just doesn't fit well into any of the WordPress tables. And it's also extremely large. So I just have that go into its own tables, which is okay sometimes. I think many plugin authors do it lightly. Like they'll just create new tables for the heck of it and then you end up with like 27 tables in a WordPress install. When a lot of things could go in the more object-oriented tables that we have in WordPress. But um, it's really a case-by-case -case decision. There's no right answer because it's right for different things. Uh, there's a question back there. Uh, Scott Ellis, I had a question regarding, I guess this is more of a sort of commercially oriented question about WordPress, but uh, having been a developer in the, pla in the past on applications like uh, Vignette and Stellant and done large enterprise content uh, management systems, I was wondering if you could give any examples of well-trafficked sites, sort of beyond just the, the normal blogging that um, a lot of us do that use WordPress. Um, and I'm asking largely because I have um, some clients coming down the pipe that I think would be able to utilize the technology, but I'm wondering if there are other examples of companies that uh, have done that. Uh, New York Times comes to mind, Ford Motor Company. Um... Uh, the Wall Street Journal. Wall Street Journal. Uh, CNN. If, if you haven't been noticing, there is a new publisher's blog on WordPress, uh, on Automatic, right? Is it host? Uh -huh. Okay. I forget, what it's, I forget and, the URL. Yeah. Publisherblog. And they, Publisherblog. Automatic. Yeah, and they um, will tell you on a semi-regular basis, there's intermittent posts that come, they will feature some of the hottest sites that they're find, be, found being run by WordPress.com. So you can keep up with what's the newest, latest that they uncover. It's really interesting. And, and what's most interesting to me is that many of the sites that actually use WordPress underneath, you won't even know are run with WordPress. Um, one, one that comes to mind that I developed was jobs.wordpress.net, which uses everything WordPress is so good at doing, um, custom fields, it, it stuffs things in posts that never show up unless I want it to show up. Um, so WordPress is a very versatile tool if you can think outside the box. Um, custom fields are absolutely genius. They're, they're a tremendous tool. Um, the post table is incredibly useful if you understand the underpinnings of a database, which is the relationship. Um, so there's a whole lot of sites. I've seen sites that literally emulate Dig, but are run on WordPress that use um, a custom um, up and down system for a rating system. At Trumers is one of them. Yeah. yeah At Trumers, it. there's um, there's one called yeah. 71 Miles, which is a travel site, which looks just like any other travel site in the world. There's, um, I'd say some others I was about there's to pull a, up There's a Lycos uh, version that runs, uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the name of it, but I can't remember, but there's a Lycos um, set of websites that's completely run on WordPress. Um, there is a, uh, what's the other one, the big one where, which has 
a lot of generic types of information that just got bought out. Um, <laughs> again, I can't think of the name, but there, there are hundreds. That's a very specific description. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> I got a few others up here, Reuters, um, Financial Times, yeah. uh, what is this, Rolling Stone Magazine, we have People Magazine, many of the Yahoo blogs, all of the About.com blogs, Southwest Airlines, Delta Airlines, CNET, NASA, Mebo, Harvard, uh, University of Florida, Flickr, all those so, guys. So what you're saying is a couple. <laughs> and, also Steve, <laughs> and also Stephen Colbert. That's right. <laughs> the, what I was amazed was when about.com transferred over to WordPress, they kept their ugly interface. It looks the same. It still functions in a really uncomfortable way, and yet it's run by WordPress. Well, let us know how you really that. feel, Laurel. <laughs> but awesome they thing kept about it. it. That's an important point. If you want your site to stay the same, it can run on WordPress and be exactly the same. You know what's awesome about about though is when they switched, they were they had something like five or six hundred move type blogs. They switched them all over the WordPress. I think one by one. Um, and they were, I think, the first at the time of the really large sites using WordPress to put the Powered by WordPress in there. Um, lots of folks, maybe their <coughs> template designer takes it out or they just forget about it or something like that, but they had the Powered by WordPress on every page that had WordPress. So. Apple had it and then they took it out yeah. and then they put it back in. Was that the student? Really? Yeah, the Apple students mm -hmm. blog. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I guess they, when they made their whole new commitment to open source, they recommitted to it, maybe they did it then. <laughs> a lot of times what it is, is it's the developer of the site puts it in. Like a lawyer or executive says, what is this, take it out, and then they sneak it back in later. And then <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Rick Ang from uh, techspiker.net. Um, one of the problems I've got burned on a couple of times is when I've upgraded WordPress and I use the default theme, except for uh, changing one of the graphics, and something's changed in the default theme and I didn't know it. Could, is it a chance to mention when the default theme changes as well? I would recommend when you upgrade not, not replace the WP yeah. content folder. Because, I mean, you have plugins and stuff and there have been people who have been burned because they, you know, their FTP thing uh, just overwrites the folder mm -hmm. instead of merging the changes and you wouldn't want that. Yeah. But I, I did, I just wondered if the default theme changes, if they could kind of mention that. I don't think we, we, sh we mention it. it. It never, it hasn't really changed in terms of the design or anything like that, but we do sometimes add features to it. So, but generally, that's in the form of a new file. Like for example, in 2.5, we added a new template for the attachments, the, so, so for the image galleries and stuff, it has a new template, but um, the main thing, this is, really tacky, but if you go to our bug browser, <laughs> um, it'll show you the changes for every single file and when they happened. And it'll show you what lines changed and what the change meant, essentially. Um, and it's, you can just click around. If you click around for a while, you'll figure it out. It's not the friendliest interface, but if you click around a while, you can see it. And um, that's technically the best way to see what changed from theme to theme, from release to release. Well, and I remember Matt talking about the possible future file integrity checker and that might come in handy as well yes. for an upgrade so yeah um okay i have a really simple question um i'm jill from simple daily recipes.com oh there you are <laughs> Hi, right here. Yeah. hello and, um when i'm when i'm posting i love the visual editor that's about as far as my code understanding goes but occasionally i have to pop in uh, a little image border around my photographs so I go over to the HTML um, button to pop up that source editor mm -hmm. and why do I have to hit the word wrap every time to see my post and put in that extra HTML code does that make sense is hit there a reason the word wrap? there's I'd... a little word wrap button and before I can see what I've written I always have to hit word wrap and then see what I've written so I know where to put my little HTML code. Does that make sense? I've never seen a word wrap button. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't know we had a word it's wrap. It's right to me. You have to show it to me. Right? <laughs> it's right it's here. Right there. And no. it's the only piece of code. And it's not a big thing. Yeah. Oh, the, the image pop-up. When you go to put a window, when you go to put an image in and edit well, it. Well, no, edit I, it? I've already put my images in. I've written my post. I just have She's to add the border. So you're just doing this on every image to remove the border? 
No, I'm put, I'm adding a border around my image oh, in this HTML source editor window. But before I can do anything, I always have to hit word wrap to see um, my content. Oh, she's got to go back to it. It sounds like it's, it's something associated with I don't know. But I'll tell you what, after the podcast, I'll take a look at what this strange button curious. is. Because I'm kind of curious. I, yeah. I, you know, it's a habit now. <laughs> but I'm, every time I think, why do I have to do this? But definitely why long term, to... something I'd recommend if you're adding something to every single image, um, look at adding it to your CSS file. And you could have a rule that says every image inside a post, put a border on it. Or every image with this class inside a post, put a border on it. And that might just save you a that might be a long-term solution, but I still want to know what this word wrap button is. <laughs> I had a question about the default theme. There was a blog post somewhere that talked about improving that or coming up with a new one. And I didn't know if that was actually part of an automatic project or what your plans are long-term for the default theme. Hmm. Uh, you want to talk about that, Mark? Yeah, there, there was some talk of uh, the theme called Sandbox, mm -hmm. which is really clever because it makes extensive use of uh, HTML IDs and, and classes to really like tag everything to death. I mean, every post gets, I believe, like a year, a month, a day tag. So you could have it so that themes posted on Sunday are blue. Uh, all through CSS without modifying your theme, uh, HTML at all. Um, so that really opens up a lot of possibilities for uh, CSS-based themes. So there has been some talk of including that as a, as a third theme. I don't think we're going to replace any of our existing ones. We probably have to hobble along with those as legacy themes. The contest that was mentioned is um, just someone's suggestion competition it's not an it's not support uh, sponsored by automatic well there was there was talk on the mailing list and things where just the wordpress community was talking about new themes and sandbox was definitely one that had a lot of strong support um, like mark said it is incredibly thorough which i think is its strength and its weakness if you're someone new to css or to markup or something like that it's got so many divs and so many classes and they change every time you look at it almost. <laughs> so by definition, if they're changing based on the time and day and things, it can be very challenging. And also, you know, I've seen just myself trying to, I thought, well, oh, I'm going to pour it out over this whole theme. Let me do it in sandbox. And it was just way harder than it needed to be. So what I feel like is maybe some of the things we can do is look at, one of the things I'm very cognizant of is the download size of WordPress. I like keeping it small. Um, <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. My hotel Wi-Fi stinks. So. <laughs> I mean, if you look at, if you download movable type today, it's four or five megabytes. Where I think 2.5 is around 1.2. About, I'd say a third of that is the WYSIWYG. Because um, the WYSIWYG does have a lot of um, space it takes up. But, um, you know, one of the things that we need to be careful about is not adding too much space. Personally, what I would love to see is a theme that was sort of very simple for moving columns around and changing colors and customizing. Maybe that even had like some custom headers or some built-in customizations that made it easy. There's one called the options theme that I haven't played around with, but I saw that it had a lot of built-in customizations that I could see people liking. I'd be open to a new style sheet for the classic theme. So that's the classic markup that WordPress had and we had a style like sheet. Like that. And it's um it's a little bit it's a little green. <laughs> <laughs> And um, another thing, one thing that I personally have a uh, penchant for is uh, one called Regulus. Because um, I think Regulus ha handles pages and subpages really well. It does a top level pages and a top level nav, does a subpages and a sidebar nav. And it makes a lot of sense. You can do actually really deep sites with it. And it actually can work pretty well for like a CMS type site. It doesn't need to look like a blog if you're just going to use pages. I think that's uh, actually a pretty handy one. Um, which reminds me, I just got reminded of two things I hate about WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from, Go for from Adam so, himself. So one is that um, I think that the way that you, the way that we do menus and, and pages now is very static and there's not a lot of customization. I can't say show me, because right now the way that most themes handle the top level menus, they say show me the top level pages, mm -hmm. whether there's one of them or 20 of them. And some themes deal well with a lot and some themes don't. And it'd be nice to be able to just maybe have some check boxes or have something like a widget where you said, these are the things I want in my navigation, yeah, including yeah. possibly links that go to another site. I wrote a plugin that does that, and it was very popular. Yes, and I think plugin popularity is a great parameter. And, but we should possibly and now you have ones. to give the link. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or see, that, at least the name of it. It'll the be the name of it is pa page links to. Page links to. So okay. you, when you set up a page, you can add in a custom field with a URL. It just links underscore to, and then the URL. And when you ever when you click that page in like a, a, a menu, instead of going to that page, you'll go to the URL you specified. Yeah. So like if you have a Flickr uh, stream, you can just point to that right from your blog. And just okay. real quickly, and we'll get to this last question. Yeah. And the other thing is that right now, when you, the image pop up, when you click on an image and click the image pop up, for in the WYSIWYG, it is different from the image uploader and the rest of the image modification things. There are too many uh, options. It's really cluttered. That should be exactly the same. You should see the same thing for inserting an image as you do for editing the image. And two, I think that'd be a great time to integrate sort of easy captioning. Have you ever wanted to put like a caption right under your photo? Yeah, no. I yeah, we have a couple of people in the audience that can relate to that. It's it's hard actually. <laughs> it's Very really hard. hard, but it's so handy. If you ever visit, actually, CNN's political ticker. If you visit their site, they do a great job of it. It's awesome. They have photos and they have the caption right there. If you're using photos from Flickr or something, it'd be a great place to put the Creative Commons credits or a link to the author. And um, it just it's a good experience. There's a reason why newspapers have done it for years, and I think we should make it easy. Yeah. Okay, we have time for one more question. This is uh, Jeff again. And one of the things that irks me about WordPress is when I visit a site that's made it to the dig front page and it's powered by WordPress, I see an error message because it can't handle the load. And I'm wondering, we have the popularity of the plugins such as WP Cache and WP Super Cache. And I know that there's a uh, Google Summer of Code project for implementing a caching solution. And I'm wondering, um, you know, what's the progress on that? And is it just something that is just too big for any one person or the team at Automatic or Core Developers that it has it already been uh, integrated? Uh, we, we the Google Summer Summer of Code has not yet reached the deadline for I believe applications, so we haven't yet chosen the candidate uh, for that project. Um, but yeah, I, it would be something that we'd like a lot of eyes on. I don't think you know any one person should do it. Uh, it's definitely a problem. Like as you say, everyone you know has their day on dig, and if they're on a shared host and they don't have WP Cache or WP Super Cache, they're probably going down. They're probably only able to serve you know 10, 10 to fifteen uh, page views a second. I'm in an interesting position because now I know the stats for a lot of WordPress blogs. <laughs> I can look at them, and I know Matt Matt your big stats. brother. This is getting a little creepy. Big brother, big brother is watching. <laughs> no, I mean, because we just run analytics on them. We see what the average hits per blogs are. Those types of things. Let's just do a quick survey here. I mean, how many people get less than a hundred hits a day on their blog? A hundred pages a day. I'm going to get under a thousand pages a day, so under thirty thousand a month. You know, a lot. I think I, I don't know how many I get. Um, how many under a ten thousand pages a day? 20,000 pages a day, so now we're up to, what, 60,000 a month? Yeah, so, I mean, up to there, you don't really need caching. <laughs> you still don't need caching up to 20,000 a day. Um, and we just took out almost everyone in this room um, with those. Yeah, it's so, the Yeah, it's, it's the one day. What's interesting about the spikes is that generally, it's not something that we could fix in WordPress. 99% of the time, it's a server configuration issue. Yep. Yeah. And we look at this over and over and over again. Um, one example was uh, TechCrunch um, had a dedicated server. They were going down with amounts of traffic that should not have been taking them down. And, um, you know, Arrington was blaming WordPress. And he wrote a blog post about this. We got in touch with him. And we worked with his host, Media Temple. And all we did was switch the way they were doing their web server. And instantly, their loads went from like this and going down several times a day to completely flat. And they have had no issues since with all the growth they've had. And this was a year and a half ago, two years ago. So often it's very basic server configuration things that we can't do at the WordPress level. Basically, WP Cache and Super Cache, Super Cache in particular, um, sort of tries to work around sucky web servers, essentially. WP Cache still loads PHP, so if you have a bad web server configuration, it's loading PHP for the wrong things, it'll still be an undue load on your site. Not because of the database, not because of anything else, but just because of the amount of memory your web server is using. Super Cache gets around that by actually serving static HTML files, um, which is the fastest thing in the world. It'll work even if your database is down. But something like that honestly creates a lot of complications for normal users. And if you, if you shouldn't be using that, you shouldn't be using that. And it'll, 
if you update your template, it's not going to update your files, and a lot of things that people love about WordPress would be gone. And, you know, you're rebuilding again, <laughs> and we all don't want to go back to that. <laughs> that so. that's, that's what we left from. <laughs> and, and the sad thing is that WordPress really gets a bad rap from, from all of this, and, and that database, every time, every time a WordPress site is dug, and I was on the front page this morning, thanks to Ronald. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I saw that. Congratulations. Um, but my server was less than 10% utilization. And it's, in my opinion, in my experience, it's 99% the server that's the problem and not, not the code. Um, I've never used cache. I never probably will have to unless I go up in the millions of hits a day. Um, and I just simply feel that the dynamic nature of WordPress, which is what attracted to me, it to me, me, uh, me to it in the first place, is what makes it so perfect for what it does. Um, and if you keep things simple, if you don't have, you know, really um, intrusive plugins, for example, you know, everyone speaks so highly of bad behavior. It's great for smaller traffic sites. If you've got a very highly trafficked site, bad behavior tables need to get optimized every hour. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a terrible, an optimization on a SQL query is a terrible, terribly um, expensive query. And those are kinds of things that if you've got a highly trafficked site, um, I would be very careful of, of putting on. Bad behavior might be great for, for smaller places, but um, the WordPress as it stands, and again, WordPress.com experience really, I think, helps um, the code to be as optimized as, as it is. Um, so I personally don't think that the dig effect and the problems we see with shared hosts are anything to do with the code. But it's also something you guys should not have to worry about. Yeah. So one of the things that we're doing is, you know, we do have partnerships with certain web hosts. And one of the things that we're doing is we're, A, fighting on your side. So if a host that we recommend shuts you down because of resource utilization, you let me know, I'm on their case. You know, and I'm talking to them, and I'm digging into it and seeing what the problem was and why they actually did it. And because there are hosts out there that are shutting sites down for nothing. I mean, I don't even know. I think they're I'm just. I'm one of them. <laughs> really? So, yeah. And the team came forward and helped me tremendously. Yeah. And um, so we are doing that. And the other thing that we're doing is helping the host that we partner with have well optimized configurations. So if they get, because a dig sends you know, 10 to maximum 80, 90,000 pages, maximum. And um, at those levels of traffic, a shared host, because of their economics, should be able to handle it without impacting the other customers. Hey and guys. so um, I don't know if every single host that we recommend today is 100% on that, but they will be within a few months. Okay, that's going to be half, going to have to be where we leave it. This would be uh, the end of the episode 39 of the WordPress podcast. I'd like to thank my co-host Jonathan Bailey of Plagiarism Today, uh, Matt Mullenweg, of course. Uh, you can find him at Matt, M-A-T-T-T, -T, uh, or automatic.com with two T's. Mark Jaquith, uh, Mark Jaquith at dot wordpress.com or markjaquith.com is Mark all Jake the links to yeah. And uh, Mark Ghosh of Weblogs Tools Collection. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Charles. What? Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate all that. Uh, if you want to take a break, we'll be back hopefully with our next speaker. Is, is Chris Smith in the house? Please say yes. Please say yes. Aaron, I may need to talk to you.